Okay, so, uh, welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the balasteros weinstein numbering system. Okay, right, so, this is the motivation for the balasteros weinstein numbering system. We would like to have a way of numbering the residues within these uh, alpha helices of the G-protein coupled receptor. Okay, so there are these seven membrane-spanning alpha helices. And pretty much they are a constant length, i.e. each of these alpha helices will be a certain number of amino acids long, and that number of amino acids that it is in length will be conserved between all the different G-protein coupled receptors. Okay, so we would like to have a way of numbering these G-protein coupled receptors, uh, alpha helices basically. We'd like to have a way of numbering uh, the residues within the alpha helix. And the Ballesteros Weinstein numbering system is a way of doing that. Okay, now you might just wonder well, what's the problem with the uh, good old way of numbering the residues within a polypeptide? The normal way of numbering the residues within a polypeptide is if your polypeptide is here, so here's the amino terminus here's the carboxylic acid terminus, then it's a polymer of po amino acids. So it's po amino acid after 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 amino acid, etc. And basically you just name the amino acids in consecutive order. So the first one is called amino acid 1, the second one is called amino acid 2, third one amino acid 3, the fourth one amino acid 4, etc. And you go on and on and on naming the amino acids in consecutive order, in the order that they appear within the polypeptide. Okay, now why does that, is that not a good idea when we're talking about G-protein coupled receptors? Well, you see, the problem is that uh, the amino terminal domain of the G-protein coupled receptor, so if I just draw the G-protein coupled receptor here, the amino terminal domain is this portion prior to the first uh, alpha helix here, okay? Um, Basically, the amino terminus domain can be uh, extremely variable in length, okay? And depending on how long this was, then that would determine what numbers the residues within this first alpha helix were, okay? So that would give uh, the residues that appeared in this first alpha helix different numbers for every single G-protein coupled receptor. So if you were given a uh, number in a G-protein coupled receptor. Let's say I told you that there is an alanine 293, okay, which means the 293rd amino acid is alanine. You don't have a clue where that is because you don't know how long the amino terminal domain is. So you don't know which of these membrane-spanning alpha helices it's in or what its position within that membrane-spanning alpha helix is either. So this isn't actually that useful, okay? It tells you where it is in the polypeptide, but it doesn't tell you which alpha helix it's in or, well, which membrane-spanning alpha helix it's in or what its position within that membrane-spanning alpha helix is. So this is where the Ballesteros uh, wine Einstein numbering system comes in. Okay, so basically this is the idea, okay? You look through every single G protein coupled receptor there is and you look at every single membrane spanning alpha helix. So you go through each of the seven membrane spanning alpha helices. You identify which residue is the most conserved. So for instance, if we look at uh, membrane spanning alpha helix 1, let's say. Okay, so here is transmembrane domain 1, and another name for the membrane spanning alpha helices is to call them transmembrane domains. So this is transmembrane domain 1. Okay, and we look at transmembrane domain 1 in every single G protein coupled receptor, and we see which residue in this is most conserved. Then basically, we find that the most conserved one is some asparagine, okay, and the three-letter amino acid code for asparagine is ASN, so this is asparagine, okay, and basically this is how the um, Ballesteros weinstein numbering system works. We are going to call that number 50, okay, and we will label every other amino acid residue in this transmembrane domain 1 according to where its position is relative to this. So, 
basically um, the polypeptide is oriented okay there will be some amino uh, direction and there'll be some uh, carboxylic acid direction okay so which direction do you have to go to get to the amino terminus well we know that that's this way because okay the amino terminal domain will be over here somewhere and which direction do you have to go to get to the carboxylic acid terminus we have to go this way because the carboxylic acid terminus will be right over here after the seven membrane spanning alpha helices okay so we count the direction towards the carboxylic acid terminus as the positive direction and we count the direction back towards the amino terminus as the negative direction okay so if you go forward of this asparagine, which we have identified as the most conserved amino acid in all G-protein coupled receptors at this specific transmembrane domain, which is transmembrane domain 1, uh, then you will add on 1 for every amino acid you go forward. So if you go to the amino acid next to asparagine uh, in the positive direction, i.e. towards the carboxylic acid terminus, uh, then that one will be called number 51, okay? So you'll add on 1. And that, let me stress again that the asparagine, we had just given it the number 50, basically. Then, if you go forward again, to the next amino acid along, okay, so to the one after this one that we've just labeled 51, you'll call that 52, and then you'll go on and on and on. Now, if you want to go backwards, okay, so if you want to go towards the amino terminal domain in the negative direction, then you'll go down one. So the one next to uh, the asparagine on the negative direction, that will be number 49, then we'll go to number 48, etc and we'll go backwards basically like so okay so that is the way of naming these um, residues within transmembrane domain one you find this asparagine which is the most conserved residue at the same sort of position in this first membrane spanning alpha helix and then you label the other amino acids uh, relative to uh, that asparagine and if you're going in the negative direction you will uh, subtract um, however many it's away from the asparagine off to get a number lower than 50 and if you go in the positive direction you'll see how many amino acids are um, between that amino acid and the asparagine and you'll add those on to the 50 to get a number greater than 50. Okay, so all that I now need to tell you is what the most conserved residues in G-protein coupled receptors are for every single um, membrane spanning alpha helix. Okay, so basically we've done the first one, so transmembrane domain 1, the most conserved residue is an asparagine, okay, and that asparagine will be called 150 okay to denote that it's in membrane spanning alpha helix one and then it's at uh, number 50 basically then uh, in transmembrane domain two the most conserved residue in transmembrane domain two is an aspartic acid residue and that will be called number 250 okay to denote that it's in the second membrane spanning alpha helix and it's what we've called number 50 because it's the most conserved in transmembrane domain 3, the most conserved amino acid is an arginine, uh, and that will then be called number 3, because it's in transmembrane domain 3, 50. Okay, continuing on, transmembrane domain 4, the most conserved residue is a tryptophan. Okay, and that will then be called 450, um, because um, it's in transmembrane domain 4, and it's the most conserved residue. Onwards, transmembrane domain 5, the most conserved residue is a proline, that will be called 550, and it's the same for transmembrane domain 6 and 7. Basically, you have the most conserved residues as prolines, and they'll be called 650 and 750, respectively. Okay, right. So, this is the Ballesteros-Weinstein numbering system for the residues within proteins. Uh, well, within G protein coupled receptors. Okay, so you go to each membrane spanning alpha helix, uh, and if you have a residue within a membrane spanning alpha helix, the way you name it is you tell me which membrane spanning alpha helix it's in, so N, where N can vary between 1 and 7, 
and then you also tell me what its position relative to this most conserved amino acid is. And if it's towards the amino terminal domain compared to the most conserved amino acid residue, then you take off numbers, okay, and make the number lower than 50. And if it's towards the carboxylic acid tail, uh, then you add numbers on and take the number upwards above 50. Okay, so for instance, we could see something that looks like this. And you could have threonine, and then you'll usually write the actual uh, position on the polypeptide. So threonine 305 to tell you that it's the 305th amino acid. Then you'll put in superscript the um, membrane spanning alpha helix it's within, so maybe it's in the fourth one, and then you'll maybe tell me where it is compared to the most conserved residue. So 56, which will tell you that this is six residues up from the most conserved residue of transmembrane domain 5. Okay, so that's the uh, Ballasteros-Weinstein uh, numbering system for G-protein coupled receptors.